How are we all doing this lovely day? <clears throat> Figured I should just watch, start the, uh, stream now, just wait the, like, nine minutes or so for, uh, season nine thing to start. Just chill out and wait. I don't ever remember looking that up. Interesting. <clears throat> how are we all today? I don't know how long this stream is going to last, by the way. So. This could be like a 15 minute stream. This could also be like an hour long stream. I don't know which it'll be. So they don't have anything like already do they? No, they don't. But they got a lot of like streams, Jesus. I thought it was Ali A for a second, but so like damn bro, when the fuck did he play this game? <clears throat> that man's too busy playing Fortnite or whatever the fuck else he's doing. Everyone doing fun? Everyone having fun? I like how this is just their uh, thing, by the way. Just a sunken ship. That's interesting. I didn't know it showed you your uh, Xbox friends. That's cool. I don't know how long it's done that, but... Uh, There is an event going on in-game now, by the way. Uh, might as well just show that off. Just this. Which I've gotten everything done for it already. For the, the first week, the first day. Ugh, so these last two days, and then they end. So you have to do these by then. And then these are the uh, rewards you get. You get the eye patch first, then the wheel... Then the sails, which I also already have, and the sniper, which I think I might already have, and then the cannons, which I want the cannons, so. Yeah. Nothing too difficult. Kind of surprised they haven't started anything yet, to be honest. I figured they would have started up a stream and they'd just be playing like like the the uh, 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 Return of the Damned uh thing like the Return of the Damned stream where they just started that with uh, all of the adventure trailers. check that's not going. I just want to make sure they don't just start streaming and I just like sort of miss it. Might as well play this one March while I'm 20th here. marks the fifth anniversary for Sea of Thieves and to celebrate this incredible milestone we've got boatloads of exciting things planned. In fact so much that I don't have enough time to talk about it here. That's why on the 6th of March we are hosting a special live stream to go into detail on everything we're doing mm -hmm. to celebrate Sea of Thieves 5th anniversary. But not only that, we'll be giving you your first look at Season 9, revealing the features, updates and improvements arriving with our next seasonal update. 
So join us on either the Sea of Thieves Twitch statue? or YouTube channels the on the mask. 6th of March at 5pm UTC to celebrate the past and the future in the Sea of Thieves 5th anniversary and Season 9 preview. I'll see you there. Now, I don't know if they're gonna play to give like out the the full trailer for season nine, or it's just gonna be them showing off certain things. I'd have to imagine it'll be uh, just the full trailer, because I don't really see the point in them just like holding on to that. You know. Oh, also, if no one has noticed his uh, scene yet on my YouTube, I hit 100 in uh, Servants, so now I have Guardians to do, and then I uh, have all, all pretty much all the curses in the game, minus the Legendary Curse, which I think it's just tied to 105 or 110 for Guardians, so... Technically, I won't be max level for these, but I'm also not really worried about hitting, like, 1,000 plus for either of these, because there's not really any content between, like, from, like, level 200 onwards, which, you know. Other than that, though, uh, how has this not started yet? Like, really? I don't have any music playing in the background. This is such a bad stream. <laughs> I was smart, I would have actually had, uh, yeah, music in the background. Well, you know, kind of figured they would have, like, started the stream already. Oh, yes, and also I have an ad blocker on, on Twitch. Don't, don't tell, don't tell Twitch that, otherwise I might get banned. I don't know what their whole thing is with ad blockers, so, but yeah. Just in case see if these randomly got an ad, it should block it <clears throat> during the stream. Because I am probably just going to watch it on uh, Twitch. Give them some free views. Oh yes, they have also been showing these, these few, which are... Uh, things that are part of the upcoming update. So we have a fishing box that's uh, full of bait. Uh, someone new for Steven Spoils since Merrick's been gone for like two, three seasons now, which like good. A new skull and a new chest. You can actually see the chest there a little bit. Same with the skull. So I'd imagine they'll explain at the very least these two. I feel like the bait box and this explain themselves. But I hope they explain these. I am an insider, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I know both of these do, but I hope they at least explain the functionality of these both. Like, what their purpose is. Like, is this just meant to be, like, a new Athena chest that's, like, highly valuable, or is it something else? You know, that kind of, uh, explanation. Oh, it is 12. It should be starting soonish. They might actually announce it on Twitter when the stream starts, so. PlayStation put out a tweet of the new fucking uh, One Punch Man Overwatch skin, but that doesn't it isn't loading. That's pretty good. Actually, I think Twitter might be down again. <laughs> I think Twitter might be down again. For like images at least, because I don't really see it. There are no images are loading for me. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, another day on the internet. Twitter fucking dying. What else is new? Ah, oh, there we go. Just refresh and it should work.
Uh, the internet. I love it whenever the internet decides to kill itself. Yes, I forgot to mention this as well. Uh, you should do underscore whitelist, as that is a new command, and I added it to my stream title like this morning. Sam tested yesterday. Ah, uh, off stream. Yo, thanks for the follow, weird wizard. It does work. I, before I fucked it up, I didn't do, uh... I just, I just, I didn't realize I had to put the underscore, so I just put it as whitelist. And I was like, oh, I, I fucked that up. Oh yeah, the bar is going up, so I'm guessing... Motherfucker, oh, this is like arena. It's like, sharpen your blades. Uh, yeah, so whitelist, if you no one knows, whitelist SP starts... Whichever fucking season. I think it's season six they're calling it. To me, it's still season three or four. Just for your simplicity's sake, I'll say season six. Um, it starts next Saturday uh, at my time, like March 11th at like right now looking like 12 p.m. Uh, EST, like noon. So you can go, you can click on the link. It'll take you to the website where you can then sign up to join, and also, uh, what else? I never knew we needed. Yeah, that's fair. And yeah, you can sign up, you can see all of the people who will be making content on it. I can't promise I'll be streaming it a lot, because honestly, every single other season, uh, Yo, bot, very cool. Ban the bot, reason, bot L. There we go. We play Sea of Thieves. Boy, I was on earlier. There's a new event going on. I was doing the event. You should have messaged me that. I figured you were at school or something, bro. You can go get an eye patch. Look, eye patch. With a V. Oh, yeah, you go to the whitelist website. Uh, I don't go to school. That is fair. Why is Discord telling me I have notification? I'm looking on mobile right now, I don't have a notification, what the fuck? I don't know, I'll be autistic, that's just Discord in general. Oh, it's Sea of Thieves, that's why. So I have it muted on here and it has it, it doesn't work, but on that it is, I don't understand. Okay. Oops. I probably should've been looking at this. Now what I'm curious about is, are all these NPCs in the live game, or is this just sort of set up? Because I'd actually really like it if all of these NPCs were actually just at the uh, Golden Sands right now. Because, you know, Golden Sands needs actual NPCs that aren't just the ones that were already there. Because it feels so fucking lifeless right now. Oh, actually, this is new. This is new update, because this is the lighthouse. The lighthouse isn't finished on the live build. Hello, I'm login game and see if they're actually all there right now. Because I'm actually very curious. Sniff or no sniff? Oh, I hope there's a Hello sniff. Hello and welcome to the Sea of Thieves 5th anniversary and season 9 preview stream. We have a boatload of exciting stuff for you here today and I can't wait to get dug in. Uh, so we've assembled just a few of the key developers who are instrumental in bringing Sea of Thieves to... Joe Need, my beloved! ...to a little in the last five years and ask them about why they're excited for the future of Sea of Thieves. And sticking with anniversary, we've pulled together an amazing array of activities for you to get involved in. So in our run-up to the 5th anniversary on the 20th of March and beyond, 
and we'll be detailing those right here today. But uh, do stay tuned as after we're finished with that, we'll be heading uh, on to talking about season nine and what mm -hmm. we've got in store for you right there and debut that first uh, season nine content update trailer. But without further ado, why the fuck let's would you uninstall C, dude? That thing is so point, many gigs, it takes forever to re download. No but for those of you who may not be familiar with the people around the table, Mike, Joe, and the, the other people who I don't know, because I can never remember um, their names. And give me your favorite uh, content update of the last five years. Oh, that's a good yeah. question. Uh, God. Uh, so, Joe, executive producer, because I'm not God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do I have the ability to do a poll? I'm going to see uh, if I can do a poll. And then favorite content update. Um, it's, oh, God, that's a tough one. Um, so, I'd like to do a poll I'm of like Pirates Life 2. Do they announce that today? Just yes or no? It just felt like it brought everything together and. The seas felt so different, and it kind of really felt like a real step forward and a real kind of achievement at the kind of end of that first year, and led to some great stories, great moments, and stuff. So yeah, so that's like that's the one I've, I kind of look back on that was like we reference it a lot. I think as part of our conversation. Yeah. But yeah, but there's there's a lot to choose from. Yeah. yeah of course. Uh, I'm Mike Chapman. I'm creative director, and my favourite content update, I would say anniversary. I think. That end of that first year. It's like they're there. That's how their sets have always been. They've always been at Outpost, like out the new window. New experiences, the Megalodon, first sales, new world regions, and then kind of ending it with kind of the variety of content that we had in the anniversary. It felt like we set out to prove a point. I have English in 10 minutes, lol. Well, shout out to this guy. But yeah, I'll say shout out to this guy, man. Fucking well, great. Ranger said. <laughs> that is true. That is, I'd forgotten that. I'd forgotten that we, convenient. We got away by announcing it on anniversary <laughs> and naming it anniversary, but it was about a month later. I remember. Um, Nailed I'd, it. I'd forgot about yeah. that anxiety completely. Yeah. You're chill like that now? Good for you. Um, I'm looking like I forgot my name. I'd remember it. <laughs> um, I'm Christina. I'm the head of community. And That's who, Christina. She's in like all of these. Why do I um, never remember so I her name? The team around the time the anniversary was coming out. And it was such a buzz from a community perspective and also in the studio about the future of Sea of Thieves. So it was a, just a really good moment where I was like, what a decision I've made. Well done me. I'm in the right <laughs> place at the right time. So it was a really, lovely. really lovely moment lovely. to come into the studio at that moment. So um, yeah. that's got to be my favourite update for a slightly more personal reason. Cool. Uh, so I'm Ryan Stevenson, art director. Uh, I think my favourite one, I think I'm going to get the name right, first sailed? Yeah. Which is the Skelly Ships. I always know the code names, but... Yeah, when we added skelly ships into the, the smash or pass Christina, she looks like a tomboy. Such a different smash. kind of feeling. Really, really early one as well. It's also a very so weird question to ask, though. Players, one thing, something else to go and shoot. Other what was your favorite players, update? Just, just what was your things. favorite update, what Helen? Was Even though I know you don't know any of these updates. Well, we, we never. We said. We, what was your favorite? We weren't going to do that. Every cell on the yep. horizon was another player, but I think we got to keep that magic of players in the world, but add. What we I'm a big like, fan of season eight personally. More frequently. In that sense of making the world of scales into variety. John, what's yours? Don't think oh. you escaped. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping because my name comes up at the start, I wouldn't have to introduce myself, therefore I wouldn't have to say it. But uh, <laughs> season eight, I really enjoyed season eight. Like I love the, the yes, my the boy. Stuff, like, and I love the the new like Reaper is there and there's some scenes there and stuff like it's just awesome. Um, and the kind of I don't know like, that whole update. Just season five, that has to be a troll, dude. Season five shit, fucking massive. sucked. Had everything. Very well rounded. Yeah. Can't believe no one said skeleton thrones. Um, <laughs> or or stools or sitting. Skeleton <laughs> thrones. That was pretty stools. good. Actually, yeah, stools season five. Yeah, yeah, they have stools. That is pretty good. Great. I love yeah, it. It was good. Like, a bit hard. <laughs> <laughs> just a bit. Just, like, just a little bit. Part of that, part of that balancing tuning kind of stuff that we got a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, we did. Really it was certainly quite better. unique, wasn't it? It was great. Thank you. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> was that the first one you did? It was the very yeah. first one. Yeah. Yeah. Massive chairs. What a way to set out a stall. <laughs> <laughs> Just a way to start as you mean to go on. Set out yeah. a stall. Yeah, set out a uh, stall uh, to uh, sit on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just do really big ones and you yeah. can sit on it with your crew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, we love we love skeleton yeah. thrones. Honestly, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was a, no a novel way to begin a content strategy. Yeah. It yeah. was. 
We should, we should be quite proud of that. I know, I love it. it. It's so like, but it's so unique. It's so like, like, like again, it's like who would do that? <laughs> it is. But it's great. Very you can still like encounter people in the world. Season, season like, six was mid. Season, season six was good. The only reason season six did so, I think most people think of it so negatively, is that I get a little warm feeling inside. It's great. Is the fact that it lasted like six months or however fucking long? Like they had to keep delaying it because of season seven. So it just lasted way longer than it should have. If it didn't do that, it would have been really good. It would have been probably my favorite update. I see if Eve's meant to me, otherwise I'll be. Um, yeah. Again, there's quite a lot, of, like a wide range of emotions. <laughs> um, but you know, like launch was a was an interesting, challenging experience, right? You know, and um, uh, and I think, like you said about anniversary, right? That mm. kind of first year. I think you've said this before, and I'll steal it. But it's a soundbite, but. That kind of like that point to prove was kind of the energy I think we had. Are we gonna have to wait an hour for any new content information? To see yes. Kind of, you know, to, to 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 culminate in that anniversary period, and then to see just the kind of the different ways that we've evolved this world and um, how the communities evolved, the stories we've heard. It just like it's yeah, it's magical, isn't it? Like that that when you really sit down and actually take it in what we've managed to accomplish as a team and as a studio and and. And again, to see the, the size of community that's grown and what like, the game means to the community, um, like it means the world, doesn't it? Right? <laughs> but it, but it does. Like I guess, like you, d you never really get a chance to slow down and think about it, right? And kind of reflect because you're always like, what's next? What are we doing? What are we doing? And um, yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's an inc incredible achievement, incredible accomplishment. And I know we always said at the start, like Sea of Thieves is going to run forever, or you know, like we'll be. Got they not see a thieves too today. Yeah, they were like the whole way there. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. like, <laughs> true. But, but it's great. So yeah, it means yeah, it means a lot. Yeah. yeah. Ryan. Oh, oh me next. Um, <coughs> yeah, it's a really hard one because it, it's been such a, such a, a huge journey, kind of going on on that kind of adventure with everyone. Um, and I think the really interesting thing is as as a team, kind of everyone on it has changed so much through that and developed like people's careers and what they can do and expertise and, and kind of just the artistry of it is just kind of like skyrocketed at the studio um studios changed so much as well so not only is the the world evolved but our studio has changed around sea of thieves and embraced what it can can do to the world and i think that's that's a fan fantastic kind of thing um but more than anything i always take away that the kind of like that moment of when we were releasing things or, or trying to kind of up against it we knew we wanted to do something magical with it and we we kind of like each update we kind of just unlocked a bit of that potential and that magic as we went along and that was why it was always surprising when we, we brought something it feels like a blur we've done so much in, in such short time as well yeah Hon honestly i've i've always wanted to work on a game i could pour my soul into <coughs> and i really and really mean that like a game that had meaning and and i think I'm so glad that game has been Sea of Thieves, and actually, I actually don't oh, think Game Pass, so it's fine. That's just fair. Yeah. Um, no, mind uh, me being quiet. By the way, I was messaging someone on Discord. And I didn't really want to talk. Wow. I've shared it with you. I think, not to say we weren't friends at the start, and everyone really. John behind the camera there. <laughs> um, I think. I think, acquaintances and colleagues have become true friends as part of sharing this experience together. And that's almost the bit I don't say, um, but the fact that we've shared that together, and you know, ev all and of the woman DMs. That I wish it was a woman. That, it's not. Um, I think people have grown really close, and almost that that camaraderie that we have together. It's someone who shares together. your. Uh, I'm just so proud that that. How can I say this? Uh, interesting uh, personality. That's part of Rare now, and that's part of the studio, and that's going to make what we do in the future even better. The you personal cry at the start before <laughs> the end. <laughs> but I think, to your point, it's not just your soul. It feels like ev a part of everyone's, everyone's soul in the studios yeah. in this game, and that's my favourite thing. It's like yeah, I'm in Christina's DMs right now. Things that you experience on the day to day. You ever see her look down at her phone? It's her messaging me back. Teams or wherever that you're just like, this is not sound really cliche. This is home now. From a from a like yeah, a, it it's not colleagues. It's friends. It's it's a safe place where you can have ideas and go do amazing things with an amazing group of people who are all as invested as you are. And yeah. I think that's that's incredibly rare, actually. I don't think many people get to say that of like a traditional workplace. And we're incredibly lucky every day to come in and do what we do. You're spot on. Like, 
like who we are and how we see the type of games that we want to make i think it's immortalized in that in sea of thieves and if if sea of thieves is the representation of who rare is i think we should be proud of that yeah oh yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> we done? Yes. That's, how, that's how John just deals with I mean I'd play to yeah. Banjo Kazooie <laughs> personally if I wanted a visual something. representation of Rare that or Donkey Kong 64 I think they're the ones who did that or it was Donkey Kong Country I don't know one of those two Rare did is the fact the game had crews at its heart so it was all on that journey together it just kind of you were making things for people to come together and it just naturally happened at the studio as well we Good. became the Goonies at the end, didn't That's we? Yeah. Yeah. We became the Goonies. Yeah. Yeah. Who's Sloth coming home with? Who's going <laughs> to <be laughs> <home now? laughs> watch the ship sail away yeah. and yeah. swim after it? <laughs> so this question, Mike, uh, can you talk us through some of the approaches taken during the updates and how w like our approach has changed to how yep. we update the game and how we've ended up at Steam from the venture of Steam? That is, uh, and I'll try. I'll try and keep this yeah. as concise <laughs> as possible because there's, there's a lot. There's a lot in that yeah. over the five years. I think thinking back to 2018 and that first year, going back to what Joe was saying about having a point to prove, um, and we've said many times, we famously pulled up the roadmap and we defined a new path for what 2018 to 2019 would be. And I think I look back on that first year. I'm sure we all do. It was very much about just bringing richness to the shared world. So. We had our content updates, you know, Hunger in Deep, adding the Megalodon, Cursed Sails, Ryan's favourite, adding the skeleton ships. We had Forsaken Shores, mm -hmm. Shrouded Spoils, and then ending in Anniversary. And I think all of those were there to kind of bring that sandbox to life. I think Shrouded Spoils did that the most effectively. That for that first time you could walk out the tavern and there'd be opportunities on the horizon. And you knew along the way, if I can get attacked by a Kraken or attacked by a Megalodon, it's going to help you on that journey to pirate legend but even the things we did as as part of learning add the gritty the service, please now it'll be like service. fucking crab dab all we over again man those to add that richness to the shared world as well so maybe skeleton triangle is the odd one out <laughs> uh, <laughs> but gun, great, you know, like gunpowder skeletons the mermaid statues like, uh, these were examples of trying to i agree with this guy can you add megalodons because if you don't know the they're like so fucking rare in the game now off that first year with i gotta get the server stability space. under uh really wraps felt like we'd done everything, to be honest but we didn't have an answer for players who wanted their own story you know with fishing and swimming and cooking and obviously we added arena at that point as well but that really capped off that kind of first that year and that journey we'd been on beyond that i think we were still looking to add more content to the game but also starting to expand the sea of thieves experience i think that kind of flows into where we are now with emissaries adding the emissary system so we can change the dynamics in the shared world but also getting into that like regular delivery of new content i think early on we were a little bit more unpredictable in when sea of thieves would be updated and it was always key to us that people could get excited for what was coming next and i think that led to our thinking with seasons where you know you know roughly every three months you're going to get that additional content and where we look from from where we are today, looking looking forward. Twitter's still broken. The guy, the fucking social media manager for PlayStation, tried to repost that fucking Overwatch skin and didn't work. New ways to interact with that sandbox. So, Captain C and what will be coming in the future, new ways to experience the world of Sea of Thieves, alongside enriching the sandbox so more people can have a greater variety of stories in Sea of Thieves World. And if I stop, because it'll keep going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm impressed how much you remembered. <laughs> yeah. But I couldn't tell you what years Build Your Adventure so it was. But it was Skeleton Trunks was the very first one. Was it? It oh, was. Yeah. It yeah. was very soon after launch. Yeah. And it's amazing. And Hungry Indeed came out in May. Yeah. yeah. And we launched in March. It was amazing yeah. like how quick we turned that around. And we hadn't and added Merrick as well. Merrick? Yeah. Who, who's that a first trailer design? was awesome. I yeah. remember th like when we pulled that together. That yeah. was awesome for me. Um Well, we're, we've been talking about it here today, but obviously we want everyone else to experience it and throughout anniversary. So starting today on March 6th, we're going to be doing Marauder's Medley. I uh, mm -hmm. love alliteration. Um, running to the uh, Thursday the 16th uh, of March at 10 a.m. It's a 10-day anniversary event where we honour some of the key updates over the last year with some 
uh, nice and simple live events. Each moment, which is a 48 hour period, if you log in, there'll be some activity for you to go do and unlock some cosmetic rewards. Underwater caves you have to go explore for the treasures. You mean like the sunken kingdom that's already in the game? So get on there, log in, start now, go for the next 10 days. But you get some sleep during that time then? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, nah. definitely sleep. <laughs> There's a butt in there, I'm scared. <laughs> That's a bit dark, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Motivational slogans for the office. Yeah. <laughs> Just put them around, yeah. <laughs> So I'm going to start this one off myself, um, but I'm going to pass it around obviously the table afterwards, but we wanted to create a game that was as fun to watch as it was to play, right? I remember that being a key pillar right at the very start. And obviously our amazing creative community and our partners and stuff have been essential to the ongoing success of CFE for the last five years. But I'm gonna pass it to you, Joel, and say like, how did it manifest? Like, where did that come from? Players creating stories together, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And which kind of, almost morphed into tools not rules right it the, did. The, the, the <laughs> internal the kind of yeah. conversations yeah. but um but it but it it came from that right being you know being inspired by games that gave people freedom right and gave people control over their experiences sandbox multiplayer really wanting to just kind of empower players with the tools that we gave them and see what would kind of happen right and see what interesting stories would come out of it and um and i think having that is the absolute like like mantra and kind of mm -hmm. thing that just fed every conversation, every single, like especially early on, like <coughs> it's 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 cause it's it's ingrained in everyone now, yeah. right? But it was like that first sort of six twelve months was, it was just every single conversation I <sighs> so vividly. It was always like, well, we're gonna go design. It's X, a captain like, skull. Like At least I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Console, yeah. right? But like, yeah. how on the table. Make this fun for a crew and not just. Whoever's on the wheel is having the best time, and everyone else is just like, "Can I have a go?" Um, <laughs> so <laughs> so it was like, "Can it be fun to be in the crow's nest? Can it be fun to be on the cannon? Can it be fun to be pet? like, you know?" And also then the life on the ship and entertaining each other. But all of that was because of that original yeah. spirit and original thing. And it was like, just give people those that, that control and let them create the theater mode. That's there really we go. And, and you know, out of our scope to be a little bit more professional. Stuff, hand it over to people. Hand them control of this world. Right. Yeah, definitely. I mean, shows the importance of. <coughs> how, how a simple statement like that can guide every decision that you make and it's it's far more nuanced than just hey we're going to go make a pirate game and that's going to kind of be the judging stick for what we build it really isn't it's it's that vision statement of players creating stories together and well we had that before the before pirates was even a thing it, it was that idea of, the, of that and then the, the piracy it's kind of just mm -hmm. kind of it came together beautifully and it amplifies it yeah mm -hmm. the idea of the being in that world and sharing it with others, being a part of a crew and being bonded as part of a crew. But as Joe said, that kind of the evolution of that or that what's true to that spirit is that tools, not rules, design philosophy that we've, al we've always followed. And there's been many times where the way forward hasn't been clear and we've got multiple ways to go, but picking the option that's gonna create the most story, that's gonna create more interest in the shared world is always the mm -hmm. right one. And that's mm -hmm. been proven true time and time again to how crews share rewards, the physicality of loot items in the world. All of these things are simple choices, but in a shared world they drive, they, well they become a catalyst for stories. So that, the fact that we have a partner program, the fact that our, our game is fun to watch, that was built in right from the start, wasn't it? Yeah. Right from the very start. What I think I love about it, it's not just fun to watch like streamers play the game, but it it's so accessible, the fun. It's not necessarily skill capped. You can have a swabby login, have a really dorky, amazing experience, and it's trended on Reddit. It's trended on Sea of Thieves. Like, it's spotlighted. Yeah. That, I think that's the beauty of it as well. Like, there are so many tools that don't necessarily require skill. It just requires a bit of heart or a bit of camaraderie to set it kind of alight. And I think that's the really beautiful thing that we, on the That's a good guy. I'm going to get so a Steam Deck cool so I can play Sea of Thieves on the toilet. Not massive content based. creators, but just people within the community, the like regular players who are sharing just a little moment of their session and it's just massive and a crystallization of everything beautiful about Sea of Thieves. Yeah. So it's not just it's not just about these big content creators, although we've we've done an amazing job. There are people who, you know, have livelihoods based off Sea of Thieves. That's incredible. <laughs> but it's also just the, the the ability to just share amazing little moments just here and there that are just like, oh, lovely. It's yeah. it's such a lovely thing to be able to see, especially for me and my team, just on the front line of this kind of stuff every day. It's just 
starting work and you see the a dorky clip of like a player I think it was Beardley or Beardageddon. You you can't oh, trust yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> don't, I, I don't, think I know the one it was. I think yeah, where they was, just swap shits it was, uh, and chase cosmetics. It was Beardley and, and uh, Mads, yeah. Incredible. Yeah, Imagine just that. starting a starting your working day being like, that is ridiculous and amazing. <laughs> like this is what we facilitate on the day to day. Amazing. And I remember uh, like when we were doing the weekly streams, like when you meet people who just lean into like what the game offers. Yeah. And uh, what was his name? Chocolate Chocolatey. Yeah, Chocolatey. Chocolatey. That was on my yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And he yeah. was just like <laughs> stranded on that island. We yeah. tried to keep him for the entire yeah. game. And he, and he stayed with us the whole he thing, didn't he? Us. Didn't talk, but just <laughs> stayed with us the whole time. And then we lost him during a battle. See, these are kind of crossovers. quite yeah. traumatic. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that literally I knew what you were going to mention yeah. there as well. Like, it's like that exact thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. And so like, you just, I love that when people like really lean in and role play and, and get involved in the game. Like that to me feels awesome almost when you're listening to those it's the surprises as well where people take the tools or the, or the kind of things and just use it in a different way there was um recently i saw someone put together a, a coralline picture coralline mm. from the yes. film on a on a beach out of out of yeah. kind of objects it was yeah. insane yeah kind of like that coming into the cities yeah. bonkers. bonkers it goes back to your point mm. it is it feels when people share those stories they're affected because they're so deeply personal yeah they're so they're yours because we haven't designed that bit. No. We designed the stage and we designed the pieces and the set dressing and it's up to you to bring it to life. And if you want to make this <laughs> your first time for streaming uh, for CS Eve and you want to get out there, we've got Twitch drops for everyone um, that's going to be uh, happening from Thursday the 16th of March right through right. to Monday the 20th but there, of what March. Are we getting? Uh, we'll be giving uh, drops away for anyone who decides to get online on Twitch and, and stream CS Eve. So get on there if it's your first time. Best thing to do it. I, li I like, by the way, that like this year's anniversary plans are now starting before anniversary, which I think shows a real like just evolving. <laughs> you know, Kids with drops yeah, for anniversary. Like, we're talking about that. Oh, this is where they slowly like, start to reveal like, everything. Know, that we can Not April. Start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they didn't say what uh, Twitch that, drops they were though. Exactly. They just those said those Twitch drops. In those, <laughs> in those five we're, years. <laughs> we're not in an art review going. Wait a minute, we need to make a cosmetic. We've evolved. Indeed. Yeah. Speaking about cosmetics, that was a great <laughs> segue. It was like, oh, oh, yeah, no. Uh, oh, no. So, can you talk us through how you think some of the, the cosmetics have evolved yeah. since launch? Uh, some of the so cosmetics, aka the ones future. they never fucking so add. When we just started out, it was, um, so we knew we Except for the Emporium, baby, come spend your money. How they wanted to and represent themselves how they wanted to. So, we made a system where they could just buy anything they want from the stores and have that whole kind of experience of going to a shipwright and, and getting a figurehead that feels like it's part of the world. Um, and then as we slowly moved on from that, we wanted to expand the fantasy of Sea of Thieves. Um, but what I, I love about it is we always gave that Sea of Thieves spin to all the cosmetics. So, for example, where we brought other IPs into the world, um, for example, we brought like uh, Borderlands, when we brought that ship set in, into into the Sea of Thieves, it had to feel like... Money spending, let's go! I love spending my hard-earned cash on a video game. Right somewhere and they've kind of like, imagine... Imagine this ship had brought it to life and then put it into the world. So yeah, so that that whole exploration. Um, but we always return back to the core pirate kind of fantasy and, and kind of role play as well. With um, so each season, we want to make sure that there's something that's novelty, something for our core players, something for legends. And so every every single kind of update, we have a look and try and make sure we've covered all the bases. And the sheer amount of cosmetics yeah. now, like each each <laughs> season, right? Like yeah. There's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> And it keeps expanding. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's always been that thing of we've we've done the store and then we added the Emporium and then we've added kind of the season track and then we added the... I like other people, they're just <laughs> so like, yeah, who's going to tell them? Really yeah, they're, kind of they're horrible at adding new cosmetics. Each, each update. Each serve a different purpose for our players. And yeah. as you were listening, that was like a can look at me. Like, yeah. <laughs> 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 We've added some oh, good stuff, but time. overall, I would not say they are good at <laughs> adding new uh, cosmetics season. every season. Um, I think they are very, and how, how have they kind of like evolved? Very mid at doing that. Like what we've seen in terms of like not counting the Emporium, I'm not counting that. that. Change how you approach the cosmetics. Um, well, obviously, the, we can we can see what people are kind of connecting with, um, and. That's why we have a lot of black and red sets. That's, <laughs> that's our kind of go-to color. If we need to have a set that people love, that's that's what we'll do. Um, but yeah, it's it's really we just kind of like each each kind of like update. We have a look at what's kind of connecting with players. Um, also, we try and make sure that there's a nice spread as well. So there's cosmetics there for for 
a smaller player base that may really love, for example, like the pinata set, that's something that's kind of very colorful and bright uh, and bright and connects with people that like pinata. Um, and then you've got the Killer Instinct set that's for kind of like edgy people that want to kind of be a bit more aggro. Um, so yeah, so we, we sort of edgy people. find ways to <laughs> try. I love the experimentation that mm. we do as well because we always want to try new things, yep. right? So uh, forgive me if I get the name wrong. Was it the Load Star? Was that the step? Yes. Thing? Yeah, yeah. But like that's kind of space kind of mm. thing. Like, but I just I love that the color, the brightness, and again that's connected to the world people, right? So it's just I just love when we go try something really different, really out there. But really allows the team to be super creative yeah. and really have some fun with it, right? I think those kind of things. It's are a really like popular one. That yeah, one. yeah. we, yeah. we yeah. didn't really popular. expect it to be really popular. It was that we wanted to do something different from kind of the dark and edgy, mm -hmm. but something a bit with a bit more imagination in there. And we also wanted to test as well, so it's got like more glowy elements and kind of floaty parts. Yeah. Um. So yes, that was a real push. But then, yeah, the players absolutely love it. But the team did a wonderful mm. job with that one. And mm. honestly, kind of a breath of fresh air really. I think it would be unfortunate if the only sets that were popular were the dark and edgy ones. Mm -hmm. We yeah. want that variety, <laughs> we want the texture in the world and some things a little bit lighter, some things a little bit mm -hmm. darker, mm -hmm. but great to see. Yeah, so you should add more fucking cosmetics, I'm mate. I'm loving all the sort of going through the test art folder and seeing all the previews. Do you do that stuff. too? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm like oh, interesting, there's, an, there's been an art review. So <laughs> 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 what's, what's next? <laughs> But seeing some of the work that the team's doing on those things to make them properly pop is awesome. Like the even the stuff with the gold coins falling out of it. Oh, yeah, that was a journey. Yeah. Um, like getting that so it actually looked right. At the first version of it, we just had kind of a rather flat texture, and it just didn't feel great in the world. And then I love the fact someone noticed that it's affected by gravity. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. amazing. Like, yeah, you noticed it. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> it but was but worth it. <laughs> like uh, another thing we're aware of as well is you know as Ryan's saying the 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 Pirate Emporium being that kind of exotic place to get these things imported into the Sea of Thieves and exploring different themes and styles. Like, we also kind of hear the feedback that people just want cool piratey wear. And that's that's something that's good for us as well in terms of that's exactly what we want to do. We cater to different styles of pirate wear that you haven't seen before. So players will definitely see a more of a, more of a kind of regular delivery of outpost cosmetics that like just gil deliver those like core cool pirate looks so I mean more, more to come there yeah I mean, so that's something to, to note as well is that we have in the background often been kind of putting things into into the um kind of the, the normal shops things that we've missed like the added skirts that was something that we, we were missing for a long time we expanded on certain um different color skews of clothing as well that we had kind of like almost done but we weren't quite finished with it okay and then we just finished off that work and put that into the store as well it's crazy to think the amount of things like Dates, uh, dates, types of different uh, things that we've added over the, the period of the years because it's <coughs> thinking back on when we had scars and tattoos and hair dyes and all these things that were were added. And then we've added skeleton transformation as well. Yes. Which was. Which Man just said skeleton. <laughs> 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 you work, yeah. Your eyes yeah. twitching, right? <laughs> 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 Trying to work out how to do that. That was good. Be mad at some. But. If you want to try out some of this stuff for yourself as well during the anniversary period, we have got an anniversary uh, discount sale over at the Emporium between Friday the 17th of March oh at 10 there you go. and Tuesday the 28th of March at 10 a.m. So there's a wide range of, of stuff that's going to be on sale uh, uh, over there. You can even go on and claim a freebie emote, which is down the hatch. I'll, can I'll you mind it for us now? I'll be doing it an injustice. <laughs> 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 it requires me to stand up. So were you, were uh, you not the animation? I was the animation. You've been retired. I've now. been retired. Yeah. You've yeah. been retired. Oh. You did such a great yeah, job. I've You've done so many of them. Put, put her in the back. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> Um, and we'll also be bringing back the Reapers Mark sales. It'll be on sale for 499 Nation coins. Oh, there you go. Bargain. No, basically, oh, just yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, pick those up if you haven't already. Those sales. are pretty good. They're iconic. They are. Iconic. Yeah. And uh, you'll, they'll be on uh, sale for a limited time. So they're uh, iconic. Like your animation reference, iconic. Iconic. <laughs> 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 it was like that. Every like time that. I use that, I'm like, that's John, that is. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen him do that. But you actually come across, talking about putting soul into the game, yeah. you come across in those emotes. You, you do. Anything yeah. that's slightly camp is probably. <laughs> <you know. laughs> there he is. <laughs> so, Mike, we have, we've reached five years. 
we have. We've reached five years and, well, not quite yet. We've got yeah, 14 years to go. Yeah, I was going to say, like, uh, is that <laughs> 14 years ago, let's not get ahead of ourselves. But um, anything could happen. But, uh, <laughs> but where do you see CFE as the future? Do you think we're going to be sitting back here in five years' oh. time again? I think we will. Great. I think we will. Good. Just crib a line from, from a deck. I think <laughs> the future, the bold future for CFE is showcasing the social magic of what only a unique multiplayer game like ours can do. And that's the future. And I think, to kind of go into a bit more detail, Sea of Thieves, inspired by that core vision of players creating stories together, is the ultimate pirate fantasy. So we'll always look at ways to enrich the delivery of that pirate fantasy for players. If, the, if you love pirates, our game should have something for you. And I think that's what we're really inspired by with the f when we look to the future. I think where's Luffy then, bro? Give me the One Piece of collab. Tools and mechanics in the world that keep keep the sandbox fresh, give you more story possibilities. I think that's our bread and butter, as it were. We're always going to do things like that. But beyond that, it's about opening up the game to more players. So allowing new experiences in the world, so you can experience Sea of Thieves in a way that suits you. So that will involve, you know, there'll be. You know, the world will move on and the storytelling of the world will move on but also new ways that you can play new ways that you can interact with that sandbox so i'm saying a lot of things <laughs> without <laughs> trying to give too much away um but that core vision the heart of the game is always players creating stories together that is the beat in the heart of sea of thieves but we just want to bring more people into that experience and for players that have been with us since the very start we want to give you new unexpected things we don't just give you the same things that we've given you before we want to give new ways for you to enjoy the Sea of Thieves experience. So very, very exciting. And five years is a major milestone, but there's just there's still too much to do. There's mm -hmm. there's there's just an endless amount of ideas and things that we keep moving around on our long term roadmap. Um, there's just stuff we wish we could have in the game today if we could. It's mm -hmm. gonna take time, but yeah. But we've been in meetings recently, like high, very high level kind of like planning stuff. And literally plotting out the next five years, and it's like, I guess it's to ten years. Next five <laughs> years, <laughs> motherfucker, they're turning into Marvel. Like tomorrow. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it really does. It's like, like that. Well, get us there. Like, like so. Yeah. No slowing down. Oh no. Like, honestly, it's like it's cool. It's like it is. It's like no, no, it's what we always said. Like, it's like we'll get there. Like, right. Like. In ten years, we'll be like, right, next five. <laughs> or just like time for a rest. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be taking around the back. <laughs> <laughs> so, with lots of grey hair. <laughs> While you're getting pulled out, I'm just in shock. And the golden age of pirates is still to come. Yeah. Damn. We're just getting started. <laughs> <laughs> just deal with him first. Um, well, taking us at least up to March 20th, uh, which is yeah, uh, the anniversary itself, we do have a couple of in-game uh, activ activations. I've got them written oh. here. <laughs> <In -game. laughs> oh. So, so piratey. Yeah. 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 Straight actually. from a PowerPoint now, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> so for all of you that I know you always look forward to this, the Griffin figurehead login bonus will be there from Friday the 17th of March at 10 a.m. Yeah, I love that figurehead. That's such a good figurehead. March at uh, 10 a.m. So, yeah get one there there's loads lots and it just keeps i have that one it's really good let me pass over to you christina <laughs> because i know you've got a bunch to to run through here <laughs> and you see better than most like how the community and how it forms around the game how do you, you describe how the sea of thieves community has changed over the years that you've been here so uh, i think the one thing that stayed the same the sea of thieves community is a unique She's like, how can I not mention lives. them constantly <coughs> so bugging us again, for stuff? Like, rare. Um, really, from a from a multiplayer shared world game. Thank you for tilting that. Tilt that. It's really lovely. I appreciate that. <coughs> you can make the font a bit big. No. <laughs> um, the the community is just amazing, and they continually inspire, surprise, delight us every single day. Um, like I say, we've started a day with a ridiculous clip to a story of how. Someone met their future partner, their husband or their wife on the Sea of Thieves to, I just had the most amazing session to, this, these cosmetics are amazing. I'm Master Chief <laughs> <laughs> on my boat ship. Um, <laughs> 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 sorry, sorry, before the... Um, before Lee comes and takes me out round the back. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong word. <laughs> um, but, but our, the community has evolved because there are just 
We're in such an amazing place where there are these established. I got so work soon. Come on, bro. Groups now. We obviously have our affiliate alliance, who um, are different groups we've recently onboarded, like Art Club, who are amazing and do amazing things. But we we have some some incredibly talented established communities here. If you love to your deeds, you can go index in anything. You like fighting? Uh, welcome like back. That. Hello, I didn't even know you left. Go to like that's very reductive, but we have all this. It's always a, you know, is that the split? <laughs> yeah. Fight the drone. Yeah. Probably should have realized when you weren't typing. I knew that for like if you, if you a while. A particular passion um, that kind of focuses on like an, an element of Sea of Thieves. There's a space and there's a home for you um, somewhere kind of within our kind of online sphere. So it's incredible. We, we have just good eggs who have stayed with us from you know Alpha, and they're you know they mean so much to us, and they are people that we invite on things. More on that later, obviously. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what can I talk about? Um, <laughs> but we also have people who are brand new to our communities who just, again, like I say, feel at home straight away because of how welcoming people are. So the community's definitely evolved, but at the, the core of it, they are the best bunch of pirates. Um, and that they have come, that's kind of evolved, and the faces might have shifted slightly, but they're still in just incredibly wholesome, wonderful community who are always willing to lend a hand, offer some advice, or just, just do something absolutely incredible and creative. So I'm very excited that we're Are they making the game for free? Yes. No. Segway. Segway. <laughs> <laughs> I've done this before, John. I yeah. haven't. <laughs> no, twice. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm going to talk about the special community day we've got planned for anniversary now. Yeah. Oh, okay. community Sex day. Just one day. Oh. It's two. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Damn. So the weekend, um, the 25th to the 27th, uh, 10 a.m. to 10 a.m., we're going to be running a supersized community day with some supersized stuff on offer. Um, it's a classic kind of format where we'll be asking people to raise the industry grade by using a hashtag. Um, but there's loads more than what you would normally see in this. Like what? Tell us. So there's Tell me more. <laughs> I will. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait. I'll it. Get ready. <laughs> so the headline is... Yeah. We will be. <laughs> I just want this show. <laughs> I just want this show. <laughs> Get rid of us. Get rid of us. <laughs> 24 hours. <laughs> 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 um, what was I? <laughs> this one. Right, yeah. so the headline is is that. No, wait for it. <laughs> we've had to jump some legal hoops for this. I'm really, really proud we've got there. We're going to be giving away 50 million ancient coins over the weekend. What? So when the community hit community emissary grade five we're going to tune up that ancient skeleton spawn rate again there's going to be 50 million yeah um, they bring it not, back I let's go I'm not, I'm not a writer not a ma maths ma adder <laughs> <laughs> are you sure you're a writer <laughs> adder I'm um, a super powers of snake <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, it's a it's an awful lot of ancient coins and obviously you've got the pirate emporium discount sale on as well so mm -hmm. if you get something you get an absolute bark amazing um, not only my that, favorite thing about this, by the way, is that the first I've heard about this. <laughs> <laughs> about this studio, I love it. I'm just like, brilliant. <laughs> sure, someone thought about it. Like, <laughs> it out, like, so good. Yeah. I did get it approved, I promise. No, okay. um, no yeah. so we've got that. We've obviously got <coughs> um, multiplayer on things like gold, uh, renown, rep, allegiance, which is amazing. So this is an opportune moment to go level up. In allegiance, yep. I'm going to be fucking doing allegiancing that time work. too. Um, you've also got a couple of login bonuses. Mm -hmm. level more login bonuses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> more. More. <laughs> We're more. crazy. Um, so we have a really beautiful black and gold variant of the community day flag, which will go really well with the Reaper's Mark sales. Oh, that looks and really nice. Amazing. I like that. Four nine ancient ancient <laughs> coins, <laughs> amazing. Um, but then we also have a very special emote. Yeah. So if everyone remembers the amazing barrel hide. Emote. Oh, that's fucking good. <laughs> oh, that's great. I fucking like that. That's so good. <laughs> So it's like a birthday cake. That's really good. I like that. I'm not going to lie. Like a Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so we've got a couple of amazing things. And then that's not even it. I can't talk about this a lot right now, but there's something being introduced in season nine, a certain voyage, mm -hmm. which makes a certain impressive world event a little bit more easy to access. And everyone who will be logging in over that period will get a free voyage, um, which will hopefully inspire them to go stack on stacks. Oh, I know what that is. I know what they're talking mm. about there. Yeah. There's some more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's more. Okay. <laughs> there you go. So, no, there is more. There Obviously, when we... Um, a free nade set? 
I was like, this is good. This is QVC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Get the offer now. No. Yeah. <laughs> Free postage. No. Um, so we've obviously got um, our wonderful rare merchandise store, which are going to have some amazing the community t shirt, community day t shirt and flag on offer for a limited period. Um, but there's also going to be an extra special kind of discount running over that, over that weekend as well. So you can pick up all your favourite piracy wares. It's not everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not finished. <laughs> There's a charming carriage clock. <laughs> um, one of the most amazing things that our incredible environment team, um, that's, that's you as well, you're, you're included in the art, they have put together an amazing photo wall, um, and this is going to be at New Golden Sands, Ooh. which is amazing. So for a limited time period, there's going to be a photo wall active within the world where you can go emote and selfie with your crew and take lots of amazing screenshots. Um, it's very, very cool. I don't think anyone's really ever done anything like it That's before. nice. Um, very very exciting it's beautiful and I'm sure we can show it <laughs> Dina Voyager calling it something with Athena I won't um, say what it is uh, we're not good for her to deny really that cute. but I do know what voids they're, they're talking about crew and take you know screenshots to savor and, and, and it's one of the, uh, the things I'm most excited for time, for uh, uh, so loads and loads and loads planned to be honest uh, um, what the, what so much season nine. to keep track of yeah thankfully we're at a bullet point list the kind of culmination of all these anniversary events hopefully should be this kind of community spectacular where we give lots of things out, offer lots of amazing opportunities, but fundamentally give players the space to come together and kind of just take amazing screenshots, do lots of amazing streams, and just effectively show showcase their, our community to, to, the, to the best of their presentation. We can have like Christina Wiz ER 2023. <laughs> Can we make that happen? <laughs> <laughs> When's yeah. the bird lock? Yeah. We also have uh, the fourth anniversary best of store bundles, I believe, as well. And that's outside of the community, but I believe it's running at the same time. <laughs> we'll probably also be available at oh, the same time. Uh, no, there are some amazing store bundles um, um, over the period, some best of bundles, which are really lovely pockets of cosmetics and things from that's certain right. areas of the Sea of Thieves. So there's just so much on offer for people who want to use this opportunity to just get a bargain, some new stuff for their, their kind of um, cosmetics chests and whatnot. Great opportunity. So, well, like th there is a lot. <laughs> Basically, yeah, there, there is, is a lot. lot. It's a lot going on. It's, it should be a really amazing, like, busy, exciting time on the seas. Awesome. I wish my fifth birthday was this good. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I don't remember it being this good. I think Do you it's, remember like, it? Cowboys and Indians theme, something like that. And it, like, it's, it might not be my fifth birthday. This <laughs> <laughs> but it was around that Just time. Just when it was your fifth. Camp guns. <laughs> yeah. Those little things you throw at the ground that pop. Oh, like yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just, re yeah. just rebounded off the carpet. Yeah. <laughs> Not working, Mama. Um, <laughs> that, was totally good, good, good. that was the most random yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that, well, that's Kay. that's kind of it for us. But so I want to say thanks to everyone here for joining me today and some of the things we have coming for the fifth anniversary. I know there's a bunch there, but we've also got a bunch more to announce um, that we've been keeping from you, but we will be announced. So stay tuned to our social channels. But there's one more thing. <laughs> in the true Xbox way of doing things. All That's right. all, because I know that there's something Phil super exciting that we've been working on for the last, say, eight years. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, no. <nah. laughs> um, <laughs> and that is uh, the making of Sea of Thieves, a documentary, a feature-length documentary oh, okay. called Voyage of a Lifetime. And um, it features a ton of never-before-seen footage and peeks behind the curtain of, of how the game was made. And that will be coming along as well on March 20th. I'll probably and watch that. You know, everyone here has been involved in some way in that. Um, so, Ryan, I'm going to start with you. Okay. And then we'll work around, like, what's, yep. what's something you're looking forward to there? Oh, so the thing we're looking forward to the most is is just all that old footage that we, we kind of haven't seen for years. I mean, you used to wander around with a camera. You and John used to wander around filming our meetings and kind of, like, oddly sitting there as the camera disappeared <laughs> into the corner of the room. But I never saw any of that footage. So, uh, yeah, we still have that in there. So, fascinating to see that. But all, but all of us looking a lot younger, probably. Younger, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the sad bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's some dev years on you. Sure <laughs> yeah, do dev years are like dog years, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 But, um, sure. but yeah, yeah, like, so, you know, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have kind of uh, seen, seen the kind of like the documentary pretty much. Um, and so, uh, you know, minus some final tweaking and stuff. And, um, but 
And the wall is it's, the best character in the game. It's an incredible story. Like, it's an incredible thing. It's like, I remember, like, you were pretty much the first hire I made, I think, back at the start of, like, Athena, like, before it was even Sea of Thieves, right? And, um, and, but I remember it's just having that, like, I don't know kind of how or why, but I just want to record this. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and then we'll figure out what to do with it, right? But that was kind of the thing. It was like, let's just start recording this. Let's get comfortable with kind of talking about it. Oh, hey, Twitter's back. Very much linked to that. Um, Images are loading that, again that, now. That plan we had to kind of like bring people in early, bring people like, be open and, and show people what was going on and talk about stuff and, and, and kind of take feedback and stuff from the community. It really kind of came from that sort of thinking. Um, and so we've been yeah, sitting on this footage for, for so long <laughs> and felt this was the time for us to go back and revisit that and, and pull something together and tell the story of the whole thing, right, from, from the start all the way to, to pretty much now. Um, and so... Uh, I just think it's a it's a fascinating insight through the, the highs and the lows, right? And mm -hmm. um, that, that was that was part of that journey. And uh, yeah, it's it's it's, it's a, I think it's an emotional watch, and I think it's kind of something that for all of us as a team, it will be kind of emotional to go watch that and to see what we've accomplished. And because you, like I said, you don't really get a chance to look back and reflect. Mm -hmm. um, but I think for you know anybody that's played Sea of Thieves <coughs> has kind of become a fan of it. I think it's really cool to see a lot mm -hmm. of behind the scenes stuff and see what it means to. To go work on something like this and make it and, and kind of go through that journey, right? So it's uh, no, it's really special. Like one of the things I'm most kind of, I don't know, but I'm most proud that we're doing and kind of got an opportunity to do. Like, and I think it, I think I, I mean, it will always enjoy it. Hmm. Yeah, certainly charts the the highs and the lows. I think <laughs> going back to, I mean, it is the it is the old footage, but going back to how it felt back then when you see some of that old footage, you, it puts you right back. In how you felt at that time, and it's, I think it's really important to we obviously we all believe this, not losing sight of, you know, how lucky we are, and how privileged we are to have gone on this journey. And I think when you go back to that footage when the game wasn't a success, mm -hmm. and we were dealing with very real challenges. I mean, particularly the how shoddy fucking launch, <laughs> and how a true reflection <coughs> we deal with launch in that video. It's kind of it's okay to go back and enjoy it now because yeah. of all the subsequent <laughs> years past them. But I think it's it's just a really <coughs> cathartic experience. I think certainly for us to go back to that and see the journey that we've been on and then just be reminded, I guess, of the amazing community that we have and the the, the success and the impact that Sea of Thieves has had. It's it's wonderful to see it all in one place for the first time. I think lots of lots of our players in our community have seen the kind of story since launch with all the behind the scenes all the great video content we've put out but there's been very little insight into what came before 2018 other than the builds and the kind of player content so that's it's a it's great to see that early part of the story i, I love the fact that we've got some of the stuff in there that we never thought would get to see public uh, the sorts of things in there and i'm, I'm, I'm just yeah i can't wait to see all that put together just one document one man's fucking talking like it's a Fucking tape the police the took. As well. yeah. It's been locked yeah, up in evidence or something. Of people on, on videos, but this is the, the whole team. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we're taking the team to the cinema. Oh, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> that was. Great. That was Sorry, I'm, I'm yeah. so excited because yeah. we actually get to watch this together as a team in a cinema, and it's going to hopefully be like you know the um, end game. Uh, for Marvel, where like people are just whooping and hollering in the <laughs> cinema when you know wh whoever appears, like it's just going to be such a beautiful moment for us to all be together and to memorialise and watch kind of the last eight years unfold in in ninety minutes, um, with us all with a bit of popcorn and some cheering. It's that's one of the things I'm really excited about because it's just it's a Sea of Thieves is its best with community and its kind of communality, and we get to you know watch it all in the same like lovely leather seat theater together um although it was ridiculous how much we did spend on the de-aging process for craig when he said he <laughs> <to start laughs> <a thing. laughs> like, i mean to think ilm were on board for that <laughs> <laughs> could have just used like a tiktok filter yeah. <laughs> just looks like a baby <laughs> 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 Sorry, Craig. <laughs> it is amazing, though. The, the, the last time the team was in the cinema together was when we all watched The Goons the together Goons. near yep. the Aww. start of development. And I remember you standing up mm -hmm. in front of the team and saying that cocktail we are... Cocktail in hand. Cocktail <laughs> in hand. Very nonchalant. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly owned the moment. I, I had a tear in my eye. Yeah. Um, but you, like, saying we're at the start of a great journey, we're at the start of this adventure, we are the Goonies. We're going to go 
build these relationships together and build this. I'm not this laughing. This is going to be a great game. Together. Not it's funny. Just, you don't laugh. Poetic that we're going to be able to do that again as a team. I remember it was like I said it was that God, it's going to be an adventure, but there's going to be peril along the yeah, way. But it's good. about having each other's backs. It's about the camaraderie. It's about the, you know they will overcome challenges together and stuff. Right? And um, it's all back. But uh, no, <laughs> but but that's kind of what it's been, right? And like I think you were really early on we were talking about the, 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 the friendships and the kind of the bond and stuff that we formed like that the things yes. that you referenced in um and it's it's amazing to see how that's kind of come true and it is a lovely little kind of way to kind of ground it and do it we had to book a much bigger cinema this time because <laughs> 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 the one we used before was like, i can't cater for this so, no. yeah it's just a bigger team so um but yeah special well we're not just about talking we're about showing and mm -hmm. we do have an amazing trailer here uh, to show you for the documentary that's coming up on uh, March 20th, so do keep an eye out for, for that on the day. But also, stay tuned for right after this, because we're going to be talking all about uh, Sophie's season nine with some fresh new faces. <laughs> we'll see you then. <laughs> 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 We knew that there was a new game in development. Players on a pirate ship together, commanding this vessel together. Oh my god, one something really special here. Come on board for the Sea of Thieves! <laughs> Yo, fucking, they're gonna get died by cannons. Let's create this massive experience that brings players together. How do we make it a world that they want to get lost in? We played thousands of hours of this prototype. It was less about designers creating scripted scenarios and moments. It was about those moments being created between players. Rare's always been brave. It's awesome when students Yo, it's Phil Spencer. This is by far the most ambitious game Rare has ever created. Creating new game ideas has got to be the hardest thing that there is to do in the game industry. We've, we've got a compass, but we don't have a map. As we're getting closer to launch, we're trying to get things done quicker. You're at the height of chaos. The ultimate test was going to be, have we done enough? And day one, hundreds of thousands of people turned up. And, just and get they didn't like it. The Believe me, it is frustrating for us, as it is for anyone that's experiencing the issue. That first year was about having a point to prove. The roadmap we initially had, we threw that out the window. What the fuck? I don't ever remember seeing that My video. My perception of what Sea of Thieves was shifted when COVID arrived. It's not the pandemic that brought people together, it's people that brought people together. It was just that opportunity to chat, to laugh, hear voices and have that human connection. I love this game so, so, so much. This is not just a game, this is a community. Cheers! Bloody marvellous. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back. We've done we've done Yo, the they changed we've form. A new crew of, of fresh faces who are able to talk all things season nine. Uh, and again, since it's a new folks around the table, we're gonna go around and introduce ourselves. We'll start here with Mr. G. Uh, I'm <laughs> Mr. G. <laughs> uh, George Orton, senior designer. <laughs> Uh, my name's Andrew Preston. I'm a it's like a movie. Guy. That's the point. It's a documentary, dude. I'm Christina, but I'm an old face. An old haggard face <laughs> from half an hour ago. Oh, no, um, Christina. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Philip. Um, but I'm, if anyone needs reminding, I'm head of community and communication. Yeah. I am Shelley Preston. I'm the lead designer. Yeah, hey, see, and this time, like, I get you all to say your own titles so that I don't mess them up. Nah, right. so that's the way we do it. Clever. <laughs> I like it. So let's dig right in here. Season 9, we know that's what you're here for, all those juicy details. <laughs> and we've got the premiere of the, <laughs> the Season 9 <laughs> content update <laughs> trailer. And this is going to be dreadful. We've got the premiere of the Season 9 update trailer right at the end of this. But first, we're going to uh, take a deep dive with folks here. So we've got them sitting around the, the table and get some juicy details on some of the features and improvements we can expect in Season 9. Andy. Yes. Andy, you're going to give us a high level of what we can expect and what, what you went into. <coughs> what was your thinking when you were like, season nine, what do I want to do? Well, high level, yeah. we wanted to um, reinvigorate the CFD sandbox. So adding a bunch of new kind of features and opportunities on the horizon for players to get involved with. Um, 
And then on top of that, we had a bunch of quality of life changes that we've been working on together as well. And we got a ton of them done as well to kind of bolster the release and make everyone's sessions more fun and enjoyable. Um, so it's just a huge suite of products. Why is my man and sweaty, man? Look at that fucking no, no, dome. No, 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 it's like so you could see the fucking quality sweat. Quality of life when we bundle it together like, makes it sound like it's less than that, but there's quite a lot of like, amazing... I think, that, I think that's the thing. It's yeah. like, you do, like... If it's just one or two quality of life changes, I, I kind of get that. But like we've done a substantial kind of suite of quality of life changes, and I think they're more than the sum of its parts. They're kind of things that will change your experience every time you're sailing on the sea of food. Things you didn't know you potentially wanted, and then once you've kind of got them, it'd be strange to ever kind of go back. They just they kind of touch and improve every single session that you have with your with your friends. Yeah, it's the this kind man's of brain is like. like You'll look fried there the entire time. We ever play mm. Sea of Thieves How without this without stuff? It? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it'll yeah. become so natural to everyone to have these changes, which is which mm. is really exciting. Like it's become like that on team. Like we're playing the internal build, and then we go home and play the retail one, and we're like, what? When's why are we in? doing yeah. this? Yeah. Why, yeah. Yeah. why is that not on? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. amazing. <coughs> and George, like speaking of like what you have been like working on with some of this, we've been yeah. balancing and adjusting world events, right? Um, yeah, that must have been huge. That must have been a huge task. Like it's not a small task, like world <laughs> events. <laughs> <laughs> some, might say, some might say gargantuan. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, world events are like a staple of the Sea of Thieves experience. They're part of like the randomness of the sandbox. Like they're really enjoyable sort of points in your session to make decisions and go and do these amazing experiences. Um, but for a long time. Uh, we've noticed that they are in balance and there are some rough edges across all of them. So we've taken some time to go and sort of smooth off those rough edges. Uh, one of the biggest ones since we've launched almost any of our world events has been that they don't usually scale for crew size. Um, so that's where a large portion of the balance work mm -hmm. has come from in making sure that if you're playing as a solo player or if you're playing with three friends on a galleon, like you have the same level of experience like it might it will be there will be less skeletons on a skeleton fort if you're a solo player but the experience will take the same amount of time it will be the same amount of challenge like the same amount of enjoyment for all crew sizes mm. so we're not necessarily <coughs> making world events easier like we know folks have been worried about that I, that's not what we've set out to do we've set out to make them less frustrating mm. um so they may feel easier but that's because some of the frustration that we certainly felt was unnecessary frustration. Mm. It wasn't fun frustration. So we tried to take those out um, and make sure that whoever's playing, they have a really good time doing I all these world events. I think that's huge as well. Well, there like you go, balancing for crews for the world events. It's great and it's fun and it's exciting when you're on a full player crew right now in Sea of Thieves. That's like the prime way to play. But sometimes, like George said, like if you're on a solo player and you're going into like a skeleton ship fleet battle, it can be quite overwhelming. There's a lot of tasks that you have to kind of manage on your own ship, like sailing the ship, angling the sails, repairing hulls, bailing water, aiming cannons, and repositioning your ship all at the same time. And it's just pretty overwhelming with the current balance. But putting this more dynamic balance in has allowed us to kind of re-go back every single kind yeah. of world event and just sort of improve them and make it feel like, Again, when you look on the horizon, everything is something that you want to go and do because mm. it's all just great fun to play now, irrespective of how many players you're playing with. And have the rewards <coughs> changed in there as well, depending on that? The rewards haven't changed, so all the rewards are exactly the same. It's just, it's just more enjoyable and fun for players to play, irrespective of their crew size. I think it, it must have been good as well to go back and see if there is things that have maybe like degraded over time or there's like some rough edges wasn't there on some yeah. of the stuff that we've sort of <coughs> ironed out and like they weren't all just rough edges some were just like poor decisions that we'd made <laughs> in the past <laughs> <laughs> like when you defeat a skeleton ship for example in the skeleton ship fleet the next ship would just instantly appear yeah. immediately yeah. and it was kind of frustrating wasn't it well Whereas it's not fair like mm. to be instantly bombarded <laughs> another one that like you pointed out really early on mm. was the uh, the cannons around a skeleton fort mm. like those the ai that we'd set up to man those is like a really cool part of the skeleton fort you're sailing in getting bombarded with cannonballs it's like thrilling 
but then while you're on the fort trying to clear the waves, you'd hear cannon fire and it's some little sod shooting your shit. <laughs> like, getting it and like, so we've gone out of our way to like turn those off and make sure they're not oh. spawning. Like, we've come up with a whole new... We've borrowed the cannon system from sea forts because they mm. work perfectly. Like you sail in, you get the cinematic sort mm. of approach and then you focus on one job rather than trying to manage a million jobs, mm. which is... You're getting these like really vicious loops. I think that's the thing. So like, whether it was the cannons on the skeleton forts, or whether it was the ship spawning too quickly when you're yeah. trying to like get the treasure off from the ship that you've just defeated, you're kind of overwhelmed. And, and like like example, like when you get to the skelly fort and you kind of park up, like great, I can board the island now and defeat the skeletons. But then you're getting hit by this cannon skeleton, kind of bailing constantly, and it's just never going away. So you kind of have to flee, run try and get to that skeleton, kill them, and then run all the way back to your ship before your ship sinks, before you can actually then board the island and play. So it's just just like taking off those Skill issue. that we had that just make it feel so much more enjoyable and fluid to play and make it fun. And as you said, like it's more than the sum of its parts. <coughs> and, and, and there are so many great experiences there. And as we looked at season nine, we've got so many things that do feel and play great. Like as Andy said, the four player experience of a skelly ship battle or or a four player experience at, at a four and it's just now those experiences are available for everyone which means when we say it's refreshed and revitalized you've got that fresh take on when you go in and you see one of those clouds on the horizon or something happens especially as a solo player you're going to feel more invited in and that it includes you more and you can actually have a go at those events which widens the possibilities for you within the sandbox and gives you more variety i think it's going to lead to there being more treasure on the seas yep. as well because there's going to be more people actually Actively participating in yeah. these in these there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you go with the Preston. <laughs> think. I think they have a little um, bit too much faith in how much people are so gonna be doing world events now just because they scaled them. About how we're changing things up and revitalizing it is um some of the improvements to Reaper's chest. Yes. So um so there are kind of there are kind of to, to kind of slightly not answer your question, but just because. <laughs> so I want to. I am going to answer your question, but I'd like I to just the other add one in. First I'd, well. I'd love to add in about the chest of fortune because I think it kind of it kind of explains um, what our thinking around these valuable chests and where you know the season nine chest of fortune, where that kind of idea comes from. So when we looked at the sandbox and revitalizing that, a key quintessential Sea of Thieves thing is people having valuable treasure on the seas. And as Andy said, refreshing these world events means more people are going to have more treasure out there. But also, we know that there are a lot of players who have already done a lot of commendations, have a lot of gold, have already kind of ticked those boxes, and we wanted to introduce something that was going to be valuable for them. And we kind of went about this a slightly different way with the Chest of Fortune in that it's a, ch it's a new, brand new chest, but the opportunity that it unlocks, it does give you gold, it does give you reputation, but it actually unlocks exclusive access to the exclusive Fates of Fortune ship set as well. So in season nine, you can find the chest of fortune at the Fort of Fortune, and you can unlock three parts of the ship set, and in the future, we'll move it around and unlock more parts of the set as well. So okay. that's kind of one part of the chest of fortune. And then along that same lines of thinking, we looked at the Reaper's chest that we already have in the <coughs> game, and we felt like they, they already have this really strong foundation that they bring players together. There's a beacon kind of in the world, and, and maybe people will go towards it at the same time. But once you've got it on your ship, um, the only way to know someone else had one was by looking at the world map, which is a lot more kind of hidden. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to bring that up onto the surface so you're looking on the horizon, you can see it. So now the beacon will stay with the chest as you carry it around. Like and arena. not only can you okay. still earn, um, earn your, your, your prior rewards for those, you can also unlock the Fates of Fortune weapon set as well. So. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So sorry to not answer. <laughs> <but> <laughs> no, that's good. It, it, it gives it context, absolutely. Um, <coughs> Christina. John. Christina. Uh, so <laughs> there's some things, obviously, you're tuned into socials and you, you see things pop up again and again. And I know some of the quality of life improvements that you've been talking about are some of the things that the community have been asking for for a while, right? Like, is there yep. things in here that you're like, oh, this is going to go down well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a couple of things, but also I'm going to talk about insiders as well. Oh. I am allowed to talk about insiders. 
I'm me. <laughs> no, you aren't. <laughs> She's hey, breaking NDA. NDA. <laughs> <laughs> so, a couple uh, of things. So, one thing that I think um, <laughs> our community are gonna have been asking for. There's a couple of things in various different sizes, but one thing is food radial. You can you can choose what piece of fruit you're eating next, which is yeah. in a in a kind of life or death situation. That is it, kind of critical. You want, you want to, you want that pineapple, not that banana. Exactly. Like <laughs> <in> that <situation. laughs> what, what, what are we gonna do with this? So we're gonna, we're gonna be a able to kind of allow players to select what fruit they're using for a particular thing that they're tackling, which I think is absolutely amazing and something we've seen requested. Um, a little thing, which is just a, I didn't realize again how convenient. It's like the it food radio. That sounds decent. A, a non-retail build is being able to equip your flag from your shipwright's chest mm, yeah. mm. because it's the finishing touch isn't it you're like yeah, can mm. i be bothered to go scale mm. that thing like mm. i could but i'm not going it to just do. makes sense to have them all in the same place exactly yeah. Yeah. So go to one chest change absolutely everything yeah. about your ship and complete that whole look mm. and then you're like this is this is great <coughs> and it means i think so many more people are going to change their flag mm. yeah. now as you think yeah. it just it's brings it up on the surface yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly that um and then the, uh, uh, and one more thing that i think people are really 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 going to enjoy is what we're doing with um red sea loot uh, george you do you want to talk a little bit more about this? I don't want to steal your thunder, but it is a, it's an amazing it's an amazing thing that we're introducing to the Sea of Thieves now. Yeah, I can talk about it like it's not my thunder. We've got a team of engineers who are actually talented who do all <laughs> this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like obviously the whole Red Sea runners, Reapers runners, to an extent, has been a thing for a long time. Um, certainly, super frustrating to see a ship that you've been chasing for a long time with the loot that you know is like you could easily earn just disappear off into the red sea that ship sinks and the loot becomes mm. inaccessible yep. um just sucks for for everyone really it shouldn't be a part of the game uh so it's not anymore with season nine <laughs> um <laughs> we basically changed it to uh that's the we so that i do get some credit for mm. all the work the engineers have done <laughs> um, but it was all the engineers are like amazing um they've <laughs> set it up so that the ship goes into the red sea sinks with the loot on it we then pretty much draw a line back from that ship to the nearest point of safe sea, yep. spawn the loot there. Um, and then there's also another quality of life feature that I think we're adding with this. I don't think it's been in the game yet. Um, but when loot's left off a sunk player ship, we get seagulls over the top mm. of it so mm -hmm. that you can find it. Because mm -hmm. we put the Red Sea fix in and the treasure was spawning further back. But that's a great season, change. That's a this is a good change. Ocean, this this no is great. I like this. Finding it in the right place. So those seagulls help. Um, yeah. So there's, hopefully, this is a fix that we'll put in and it will be great for the few folks that encounter it and then folk will realise that that's what's happening and actually w it will have been pointless because nobody will do that anymore and mm. the feature yeah. will kind of not really be seen. Mm. Um, that would be lovely. Um, it works for dumping stuff off the sides as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Like so if you're trying to find other ways yeah. to like spite somebody that's there's chasing no way around you. it. Yeah, yeah. Still that still works as well. So yeah. Yeah. It's really great that that's <coughs> happening alongside where we're really trying to revitalize having treasure on the sea, right? Like it'd mm. be if you had the chest of fortune on there and everyone's just root stealing into yeah. the sea with it. Yeah, kind of great. Absolutely. So it's amazing to see them come alongside each other. Um, Can <coughs> I talk about one more thing from insiders, which I think people will be really interested yep. in? She's again, breaking NDA like again. Because this is an official live stream. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I have permission. Um, one of the things that Mike touched on just previously when we were talking about anniversary and cosmetics are piratey cosmetics. Season nine has some amazing amazing piratey clothing and the insiders have responded super well they're like this is amazing um i personally love them i might actually change my outfit for the first time in two two years my pirate i haven't been wearing this since 2021 just to clarify <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but there is a, there's, there's an amazing track of seasonal rewards this this time around which are uh, like i just can't describe how good the trousers are people will see <laughs> <laughs> the trousers are just like Ooh. so we've got uh, like a, a plethora of different things from small kind of quality of life improvements that are going to feel like you say supernatural yeah. and like like they should have always mm. been there through to like exciting new stuff that people have been asking for for such a long time so really really exciting season all right okay and we have um i'm gonna get into it now dynamic like world event stuff that's happening mm. there as well i think that's been kind of revitalized right i don't know who's who was heading that yeah i mean we we, we sort of looked at we kind of wanted like there's tons of opportunity for things to happen in Sea of Thieves, but as we've been adding more and more and more content to the game, it's actually prevented some of our older content from actually working as it was originally intended, if that makes sense, just because there's so many different ways for new things to kind of block other things from working. Mm -hmm. So 
we kind of took a look back through like data of where our shipwrecks are spawning, how frequently the megs are spawning and where they spawn specifically, the krakens, the fog, all these different kind of systems and we've kind of been tuning them up so that megs can spawn everywhere again, krakens can spawn everywhere again. Like the shipwrecks now only spawn kind of inside the world of the islands rather than off in these kind of extended map areas near the Red Sea that are kind of really far and out the way and, and not kind of in the core flow of where you're playing. And the fog was kind of a similar I'll thing take Megs there, back, so if that's what that means, that their nice Megs are actually going to, like, spawn yeah, frequently now. Yeah. It's, yeah. Always, it's always in, in the devil's yeah. role, <laughs> It's basically always in the devil's role, because yeah. of all these extra things that we've added into the game. Um, but, yeah, we've been tuning all that stuff up. So, again, hopefully, like, all of these extra things, even things that you've played and engaged with before, they're just more frequently available in Season 2. Yeah, um, it's, it's about like re unlocking that value for mm, everybody. Yeah, like you say, yeah. like you, we know it's it's cool and it's fun to be mm. sailing through the fog, but it's been kind of a bit missing and yeah, not present yeah, for yeah. a long while. And it's about bringing all that back in. And with all of that happening all at once, all in this package in season nine, it's super exciting. Yeah, yeah. And so was this, this was this because of like exceptions that were made, like so that things can't spawn because of this happening? Absolutely, yeah. Happening. Like the, there was just so many new things that we've added into the world that are kind of like block blocking things and like the world's like got more like all the seaports got added for <gasps> example you know all the pockets where like there were places where you could kind of spawn mm -hmm. just just tons of new content over over time which just prevented things from doing their job so we've just been going back and kind of refreshing that and making sure that everything's in order and working as intended it's nice to see this come around <coughs> like the fifth anniversary when we're having mm. a look back, right? And we're looking back at all yes. that kind of amazing content that we've put in. Like yeah. How can we make it like come to the fore again? Mm. Um, and I also hear that we have some new uses for the balloon. And we do. Yeah. Very exciting. So there are a couple of new things, actually. So the first is players can use their doubloons now to purchase um, the season one cosmetics. So they're coming back into the game. Ooh. So for anyone who missed those um, a, a long, long while ago, there is a way to get there. It's a very, <laughs> very high cost, um, obviously to recognize the kind of exclusivity of those at the time. But if you did miss out, um, they've obviously been exclusive for a long while now. Um, and at this point we kind of felt it was fair to bring them back for those players who missed out. And then the second thing you can also do is for Pirate Legends, they can buy um, three new Pirate Legend Voyages. There we go. Various adventures mm, nice um and i'm just gonna go around the, the table here i'm gonna start with you and george but like <coughs> is there something in there that maybe we haven't talked about yet or something you want to go into more detail that you're really looking forward to like seeing in there uh i'm weighing up how cool to be here and i'm gonna be very because i know what andy wants to say <laughs> and like the best my favorite feature that we've done in all of season nine is the improvements of the harpoon mm -hmm. um it's so we've now, for context for those, the, the folks won't have seen it yet. Well, no, not yet. Not, oh. This is all new. We are improving the harpoon. <laughs> um, <laughs> for a long time, the harpoon has operated under the tools, not rules approach of, of Sea of Thieves because that's how we make everything in Sea of Thieves. And we took some time to sort of reevaluate whether that was still right um, and whether we were unnecessarily adding sort of churn to a player's session. So we've now made it so that any loot, um, sort of booty items that you hit with a harpoon then get instantly added to your ship rather than having to pick up a loot item, walk around, take it off, put it down on the ship. We're Treasure auto loaded, that's alright, I guess. Sort of semicircle behind you. Um, that's a change I could take or leave, to be items. honest. Anything I'm not really, pick up I don't really feel strongly one way or the other. Immediately added to your ship. Just like when you harp in a player and like, it's like one yeah. add it it's one of those weird things, right? Because yeah. like you're so used to how it did work, but it's yeah. like one of those things where the same way it's like. Oh wow, this is huge! Like because yeah. it should always have worked like this. Yeah. Is what we like felt like when we it's played like it. Unifying how it works in with players, right? Like you know, when you harp in a player, they instantly come on the ship. Yep. It's just the same yeah. loot now. Yeah. So like everything feels consistent, but it's super powerful for like a solo player. Really like yeah. if you're trying to like get stuff out of the ocean, it's just like bang, 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 yeah. bang, and it's all on your ship, and then you can go and and for captains and out there as well, it works <coughs> for the <coughs> sovereign. Uh, oh, oh, it will yeah. actually oh, put, nice. put the uh, loot on the lift for you. So yeah. yeah. Andy. See, mm. these are the things that, like, you think about that first step, and then you don't think about like where else is harpoon. Yeah, and how yeah. Can yeah. 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 But suddenly, yeah, it Im improves everything. Yeah. And yourself, Andy? Um, I mean, there's tons, but like, I guess uh, up there, the top tier would be um selling things directly from a collector's chest. Again, sounds quite minor, but like, I don't know how many times players have kind of gone back to an NPC with three items inside a collector's chest, put it down, open it up, 
Oh, they're gonna we're gonna be able to sell them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like all these kind of steps to just get to the new money. I want to get back on with Show my adventure. Like. Um, whereas now it just gracefully you got one button press, boom, and it just sells all the contents of so the good. collector's chest immediately, and it even recognizes whether certain things can't be accepted by a certain NPC and it'll tell you which one to go to. So you can kind of go back to the order of souls and mm. go, yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> so Genuine shock and awe. <laughs> how, does it, how does it work for sovereigns? Shelley? So they just take everything. Yeah, well, right? they take yeah, Oh, they yeah. just yeah. ask. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The convenience. Yeah. So yeah. So it just like harpoons up yes, onto the lift. Yes, you hand it off. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Harpoon it, land straight on the lift, hand but, it all in. But crucially, yeah. it doesn't sell the actual chest in the same press because a lot of players obviously love to use that use as a it, tool yeah. to go back and get stuff. the next three yeah. or whatever. Amazing. But you can still obviously sell the chest uh, as a second press after it's emptied. Um, so don't spam that button. No, don't <laughs> spam <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. these are, these are That's the a really good change. A That's time, really good. It's like we don't always have the opportunity yeah. to do these when we're focused on other types of seasons. So season nine has been great because it's we've almost got this kind of like backlog of ideas of all these things that we've wanted to do for so long that we can finally do. Mm. Can I say one more? Yeah, of course you can. I've got a few. I was going to ask if I got two, so I'm allowed to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for setting the precedent. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> this is going to sound like a minor one as well, but I know that it will be something that's been highly requested from the community. But you know when you fire a cannon from your ship and it hits another player's um, ship and you get that lovely... Da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da, like those Keep kind going. of core. Keep <laughs> 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 it was a full rendition um, <laughs> of an entire ship but battle. The, um, <laughs> that, that kind of crucial player feedback that I've shot mm. a cannon like in the distance, whether it's dark, I can't see them, or it's long range, but I get that like instantaneous kind of audible feedback that it's hit, it's worked. They've now separated that from the music slider, so it's on its own slider. So if you that's good. That's a good change right there too for like PvP and shit. Your own jams. That you can independently tweak this slider and just have that kind of crucial feedback still audible whilst you're playing. Nice. That's definitely. I've seen that pop up a lot, especially with partner as well. So it's going to be, it's going to be one for exciting times. Yeah. Chest of fortune. Like I love nothing more than, and I'm not skilled enough to do it myself but i love watching like an athena heist mm -hmm. yeah. to have another Type piece of high value that everybody wants Hello. and sees like i just can't wait to see what a concrete content creator w is gonna changes. get into with it um there i think go. it's gonna introduce like a little bit more magic into the sea of thieves and and see some kind of calculated strategies plays i think it's gonna make four fortunes more attractive as well mm. yeah because you're gonna see that um cloud go up and go that interesting someone's over there we've, or we've reimagined we've it a, that a as well, bit right? as well yeah. yeah so it's yeah. not just <coughs> so all the stuff that that george talked about earlier about that balance we've done that as well for the fort fortune but we also looked at the identity of that and where it kind of sat in the sandbox and we felt like looking back at it it just felt overly difficult and overly long and too much of an investment so we've also kind of drastically reduced the time investment there so it's still a harder fort it's still a, it's still a good investment and culminates in an ashen lord but it's just that bit more approachable as well amazing and it goes back to what you were saying there's just going to be more loot on the season in that yeah. case mm. the yeah. fort fortune is a slightly easier experience mm -hmm. there's a high new high value chest like yeah. you're just going to hope that when you a bit more often as well interesting so, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it just means when you load into a world there it, you just can exactly. be a little bit more assured that the seas are a little bit more alive with a mm. little bit more potential yeah and so uh, i think you said it earlier it's key that it does it's going to move per season right that the, mm. the yeah i mean like as <laughs> how often it's <laughs> how often it's going to move no i think i think Exclusive. seasonal like to, to, to be to be open to be open and honest like seasonal is the plan but obviously we'll see kind of how how players <coughs> react to it and 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 like it's a it's a it's a new thing right mm -hmm. like we, we've we've got one a single grade of the commendation for cashing in um, both types of Reaper's Chest or the Chest of Fortune, two separate commendations to unlock that ship set or that weapon set. And then we're not going to unlock your ability to progress towards okay. the next grade until we put those next items in. And it's something quite new. So we're going to see kind of how, how that goes. So they're the keeping season. grades per mm -hmm. season. And then All right. Oh, yeah. Um, so um, two for me. So firstly, the changes to the Hunter's Call. So mm -hmm. the Hunter's Call have got a few mm -hmm. different changes. So firstly, we've introduced Adelric. Uh, who's just awesome, who is uh, Merrick's nephew, who has kind of just become old enough to not, not like, 
probably was a few years away from being quite good enough to join the Hunter's Call. Right. As a little bit, as a, as a Merrick's little bit nephew. Still. But obviously, with That's with scary. Merrick's Merrick's demise, <laughs> there's a vacancy at Stephen Spoils. So Adelric's kind of taken on that mantle. So you can now cash in again at Stephen Spoils, um, and the C posts are. Um, giving you a uh, a bonus on gold, so fifty percent extra on top of gold for cashing in all <coughs> your hunters' call items. Um, because you can also, if you're a captain, cash in hunters' call items at the sovereigns now. But that will be for that. Yo. Than the bonus rate for going to sea posts. So that's my first one, which I appreciate was three things. But also, but also. Um, the um the skull of destiny. I was like gonna you say, have to, you have say. to talk yeah. about the skull yeah. of destiny. So when I talked earlier about those pirate legend My favorite. I'll, I'll, I'll refrain from going into all of them because I <laughs> appreciate <laughs> I've already said too much. But one of those is the search for the skull of destiny, which will give you a wayfinder to a nearby island to dig up this skull. And it's kind of um in a similar magic to the ritual skull, used to start the fort of the damned. But it also has all colours, flame of fate within it. So if you're a pirate legend and you have the doubloons you essentially now have access to start the Fort of the Damned on demand, um, which, again, more loot on the seas, more active, more events happening. So it will make the experience better for everyone, even those who aren't Pirate Legend, because there's more likely to be a Fort of the Damned on the go. It's everything you need. It's the all-in-one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the skull and of this. Yeah. <laughs> now Shelley has said that, I can uh. actually reveal, when I alluded to earlier on with Community Weekend for Anniversary, Everyone will get a Skull of Destiny voyage over that weekend, yes. so they can max maximize Whether the amount you're a of loot they can or earn. Not, right? Exactly Everybody. that. Everybody. Everybody. It doesn't matter if you're a legend or not. Doesn't matter if you got the doubloons. You're gonna log in. You're gonna get that voyage, and nice. you can. Yeah. That's go. nice. I like that. Yeah. 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 See what we meant about more mm -hmm. to come when we said there earlier. Mm -hmm. You only had to wait thirty minutes for yeah. more. More. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so much. Um, and then I think. I, I hope I'm right in seeing that. There's more, by the way. There's more. I just want to clear that up. Like, there's more than what there's, there's a lot more. There's a lot more. Um, so, I mean, I think we're also... <laughs> we're going to show the trailer. No. some more progress. <laughs> more progress yeah. for the new port. Um, so I know people are looking forward to seeing the, the new things that are coming there. I got a sneak peek at mm. some of that on, on Team Building. I want to know what's underneath the big cloth. <laughs> that knowing <laughs> look. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good. Could hazard the guess. Mm. Right. <laughs> well, I think <laughs> that's about all we have time for here today, folks. Uh, thank you, everybody, for, for obviously coming and, and joining us here and, and chatting through this. <laughs> and I know a lot of people <laughs> are... I mean, you've been watching some of this stuff that's, that's been on screen, but now we're going to bring it all to you with the wonderfully voiced by Mr. McMurtry content update trailer. Uh, for season nine we've got a really busy month ahead so obviously if you want to keep up to date with everything stay tuned to our social channels please say this boy i'm watching this right now well i just pointed it out stay tuned to our social channels and head on over to our website where i think we have a page that's dedicated for our anniversary and obviously we'll have our usual season uh, nine page there as well to stay up to date with everything that's going <coughs> on and yeah we look forward to to seeing you on the seas for for season nine and then again for all the the events that are happening through the anniversary and yeah stay tuned because here comes the season nine content update trailer all right sea of thieves season nine is nearly here and we are sailing into port with powerful new features a treasure trove of updates and improvements and some shiny new rewards yo the new sovereign building let's go Changes have come to the Ports of Fortune. The Chest of Fortune can now be found amongst the other treasures safely locked within the Port Vault. These chests will not only reward you with large amounts of gold, but each chest cashed in will count towards care. new commendations that once unlocked will earn you items from the Fates of Fortune ship set. With more items from the set to be unlocked in future seasons. God, that looks fucking nice. Reaper and Reaper's bounty chests have had an update too. Not only will cashing them in unlock weapons from the Fates of Fortune cosmetic set, but their telltale beacons will now always be active, regardless of whether they've been picked up or not. So everyone will know where you're scurrying off to. We've also rebalanced the difficulty of several world events. 
from forts of fortune to ashen lords. The difficulty of the emergent world events you engage in. I will be honest, the uh, size. the ashen lord and changes are so bad. Ship but... battles are bad. Now expertly tuned and minus the giant talking head in the sky. We've also upped the chances of finding shipwrecks, being shrouded in dense fog as you sail across the sea. And encountering the Megalodon and cracking on your adventures. So the world of Sea of Thieves will feel more alive and dynamic than ever before. God, I hope so. And this game has felt so fucking new dead. Voyages to embark on. You can set off on the hunt, battling fiendish skellies to unearth their accursed loot. Or go on an explosive adventure to dig up some volatile valuables. You can even follow the bearing of a special Athena's fortune compass to acquire the mysterious Skull of Destiny. This special skull can manifest the various flames of fate and be used as a ritual skull which will make starting the fearsome Fort of the Damned much easier. These shorter and more focused pirate legend voyages are bought with doubloons. So blow the dust off your stash and head out on the waves. And with the launch of Season 9, there's another 100 levels of stunning rewards to unlock, including the prosperous privateer clothing set and accessories, some unique sweet treats and gilded age items for your ship and pirate pirate legends can also earn the legendary bone hunter jacket and spyglass and it's time to grab a grog and cast off with new emissary rewards where you can unlock trading company themed fishing rods and tankers Tankers and fishing rods. There's also a brand new plunder pass available as an optional purchase where you can earn some dazzling premium items, including the Sting Tide ship set and variations of the Sting Tide costume. And over in the Pirate Emporium, we've got the Sea Serpent ship set, weapon set. And costume. You can also grab the Lodestar ship's crest, a gleaming gold curse Barbary. And for pirates of a more retiring, mysterious nature, there's the enigmatic emote bundle. And you can grab the hearing things emote for free. Alright. But that's not all. There are even more improvements this season. When a ship is scuttled in the Devil's Shroud, any loot they had on board will now resurface in safer waters at the Shroud's edge. Yeah. Nice try, runners. There's a new food radio menu, so you can be more specific about the meals you munch. Seagulls will now flock over loot that has surfaced from a recently sunk ship, making it easier to spot. And when you harpoon loot, you can now easily drop it on board your ship. New bait crates will appear emergently on the islands of the Sea of Thieves. Or you can buy them from the Hunter's Call or the Merchant Alliance. And when you're using your fishing rod, you can now access a shortcut to the bait radial menu. That's alright. Mermaid statues have been rebalanced to be easier to destroy and to increase the number of gems earned. You might even bag yourself a jackpot. You can equip flags at the ship right on outposts, so no more scurrying up the mast to show off your cherished colors. Captains can now choose from an expanded range of captains' voyages. Oh, the more. events of their session will be recorded in their logbook, and they can sell their hunter's call items to the sovereigns. And a new family member has answered the call and filled the empty position at Stephen's spoils. There's all this and more to discover, so get ready for smoother sailing and the refreshing breeze of change blowing in across the water in Sea of Thieves, Season 9. What, uh, 10 days? It's not bad.
that's it. All right. Well, I think a lot of those changes are good. I think some of them are going to be iffy. Geo, sorry, I was looking at Discord. I, I was not even paying attention to this at all. I think it's an all right season. I think it's going to be, I, I hope it's not going to be four, four months like the other ones have been, because I don't really think you can, this is enough content to last four months. I hope this is more of a three month one, but I think it'll be enough in like the first month to keep people engaged. I wouldn't say mid, but I think compared to like season eight, it's not as good. Like, I was kind of expecting a little more, but also it wasn't horrible, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I just hope this doesn't last for four months, because I, I genuinely think the game will be kind of, like, dead at that point. But I think if it lasts three months, and they at least add enough content in the, like, enough, like, patches and shit in the uh, monthly updates, I think it'll be alright. See it, Thieves? Uh, maybe in, like, 20 minutes, because I have to do some, I want to do some, like, school stuff first, because I still have to, like, download shit on my laptop that I haven't done yet. Overall, though, that's alright. It was an alright. I'm streaming for nearly two hours. That's pretty cool. playing the game alone because I find it boring. Just listen to music. That's what I do whenever I play Sea of Thieves solo. Is I just listen to like YouTube and stuff. It helps a lot. I think I'll probably end stream now. Uh, Friday, I'll probably start Black Doom Black Mesa again. Continue that. I don't know how much longer left in the game I have. But... Yeah, I think overall it was uh, pretty good. In order to play, I will do that. <coughs> Uh, yeah, though, I will see everyone here again on Friday for more Black Mesa, maybe some other funny stuff, and peace out.